How's it going everybody? My name's Dave Whipple and you're watching Bush Radical. It's the middle of the winter, there's lots of snow. Maybe you're like me and you're kind of getting that snowmobile bug. Maybe you'd like to ride some trails or use a snowmobile as just a vehicle to get back into the back country in the winter. Maybe you've got a few acres of property, you want to get a couple sleds for the kids to have fun with. In this video I'm going to go over the basics of getting into snowmobiling for pennies. And I'm talking dirt cheap. I'm going to explain the snowmobiles you should look at the ones you might possibly want to avoid, how to evaluate one if you're going to go take a look at it with cash in your pocket, and ultimately to get you motoring on the snow for just a few bucks. First off, let's talk about what snowmobiles make sense for somebody who wants to spend next to nothing to get out snowmobiling. What you want to look at is snowmobiles from the 80s and the 90s. If you go back into the 70s, there was 25 companies that made snowmobiles. In the 80s, it was pared down to four. Those four are still around. The other 21 of them are gone. You want to look at sleds from Yamaha, Polaris, Arctic Cat, and Skidoo. Now the reason I would say look for something from the 80s and the 90s, if you get in the 70s, you're kind of getting into a little more antique era. You get up over 2000, you're talking about stuff that hasn't lost enough resale value to be cheap. The 80s and the 90s were a time when they made a lot of sleds, and if you want, you can pick one up for a few hundred dollars, and parts are very available. What do you want to look for? You want to look for a sled that they made millions of, you want to look for a sled that is going to have a really reliable reputation. The internet's your friend. Read everything you can and find out what sled is very common, doesn't have any collector value, is super cheap to buy, and has a track record of being rock solid reliable. So you want a proven engine. You want a single carburetor. Now I'm no expert on snowmobiling. I snowmobiled a little bit as a kid. I snowmobiled a little bit back in the early 2000s in Alaska and I've got a few snowmobiles here that I've recently picked up. I'm no expert. However, I run a lot of old engines and I keep them all working. So mechanically, I know a thing or two. When it comes to snowmobiles, I would recommend a single carburetor on an engine. When you got two carburetors, they have to be synced up. When you got one carburetor, you just have to dial that one in and you're as good to go as you can be. Look for an engine that's proven, Look for a sled they made millions of, look for a sled with no collectible value, or the single carburetor. I would also tell you to look for sled engines that are fan cooled. It's just a little bit simpler design and less stuff to worry about. These snowmobiles back here are all Skidoo Safaris. Skidoo Safaris are the most unsexy snowmobile in the world. They made a billion of them. The engine in these things is an Austrian made Rotax 377. They're very simple, they're very easy to work on, the parts are super cheap, there's a million of them, they're very reliable, and nobody's collecting them. So, um, you know, rock bottom prices. Well, what should you avoid? I would avoid anything that's super rusty, you know, up in the Midwest with the salt. I would also avoid anything that is a triple, anything that's, that's a super big engine, like if you see an 800 cc mountain sled and it's really cheap I, I if you get that temptation to think i'm going to get something really powerful and maybe something newer for cheap uh, there's probably a reason why it's super cheap it's probably a lemon sled there's probably a lot of problems with it one thing you'll find the more you look into the market of snowmobiles the smaller the snowmobile the longer it's going to last you see these bravos and tundras and exciters and excels at old stuff from the 80s and there's sleds out there that have 10,000 miles, 15,000 miles, even more. They don't have a ton of power. When you hit a jump, you're not going to hit the jump at 70 miles an hour. When you hit a rock, you're not hitting it at 100 miles an hour. Basically the older, more low powered sleds are generally extremely dependable. And when you get into the stuff that's, you know, the, the high performance uh, mountain sleds, uh, yeah, they've got enough power to ruin themselves and they're meant to be ridden hard. Not ridden down the trails or ice fishing, they're rode hard. So as far as a list of stuff to look at from the 80s and the 90s, all the Polaris Indies from the 90s, very popular sleds, uh, Yamaha Phasers, Yamaha XLVs, Yamaha SRVs, they had a 540 engine in them that was a bulletproof engine, the Yamaha 440s, XLs, uh, enticers. When it comes to skidoos, anything that's got a 377, uh, anything that's got the 250, like the Safari Citation and the Citation and the uh, Skidoo Tundra, all those single cylinder engines just seem to run forever. I would also say a Scandic. If you can find a Scandic for cheap, snap it up. Let's say you find a sled and you want to go check it out. What do you look for? Let me show you. 
A snowmobile is a track vehicle. Flip it over, because most of the stuff that's gonna go wrong with it is on the bottom side. You wanna take a look at the bottom of the skis and make sure there's no cracks. Make sure the skis are in pretty solid shape. These are the carbides. It's, it's a wear bar at the very bottom of the ski. These ones are getting pretty flat and they're pretty nasty, so there's, there's some wear on that. But honestly, I paid $200 for this sled. So it's fine. This area underneath the engine, you want to take a good look at this area. Make sure there's no big holes when you're running through a field or something. If there's a big hole in there, it's just going to fill your engine compartment with snow. Now take a look at the track. This track is actually in pretty decent shape. It's actually, uh, it's, it's not in the worst shape. Could be better, but you know, it's, it's quite old. You can see, you know, there's some dry rotting to it. But uh, it's got a few thousand miles left in it, and a couple thousand miles on a snowmobile is, is quite a lot of riding. You want to take a good close look at the wheels. Make sure the rubber on the wheels is in fairly good shape, and, or at least that it's there. We're talking about cheap rides here. We take a look at this back wheel. We've got a lot of cracking on this rubber. You know, it's still in one piece. It might last, you know, might last another 500, 600 miles. Who knows? You can see that wheel looks fantastic for its age. One of the most important things to do when you get a new snowmobile is uh, grease up everything that takes grease in your suspension system. There should be, should be a grease cert on these crossbars. There's the front one. If you go back here, there's the back one. Make sure those are good and greased up. Anything that's got a grease fitting, get it greased. Now if you look inside here, this is actually the drive shaft. It drives these cog gears that drive the track. On each end of this shaft, there's a set of bearings. Some of the older sleds have bearings you can grease. Some of the newer ones, it's a sealed bearing. Just get in there if you can. You can just barely see the bearing behind this cog over here. What you wanna do is you wanna get in and just take a look at those bearings. Make sure the seals aren't busted out. This whole section here is called the tunnel. And we wanna take a look up underneath the sled at the tunnel. Make sure there's no cracks in that. This piece of plastic down here that the track itself rides on, this is called the Hyfax. And it's basically, uh, it's a wear part. It will just wear down until there's nothing left. Once this whole thing is wore through, these metal clips that are part of the track will start eating into this uh, aluminum rail here. So you want to check your Hyfax, make sure that there's still some meat on it or change the whole thing. And once you've checked that everything is good underneath the track, pop open the hood. This unit is the brakes. Pretty important. Make sure that works. Nice. Check the throttle for movement. Now here is an oil pump. The oil pump on this sled is operated by the throttle cable. Make sure your oil pump is doing what the oil pump is supposed to do. This sled of course has a single carburetor right here. And this, this is one of the heart and soul items that goes bad in a snowmobile. This is the intake boot. It's supposed to have two clamps on it, but instead it's got a piece of wire and a whole bunch of tape. That is baloney. Now this is the original intake boot off this other sled. It's got a gigantic crack in it. That will ruin your engine. Cracked intake boots are one of the most common problems you're gonna run into on an old snowmobile. The problem is, is the carburetor mixes fuel and air to a specific ratio. And then beyond the carburetor is the intake boot and then the engine. If that intake boot has a big crack in it, it'll suck air, which will make the sled run lean, which will make it run hot. If you're out shopping for a snowmobile, for cheap, and you run across one that has an intake boot, with a big old giant rip in it, which you probably will. If it's got good compression and, and it'll fire up and run, it, it probably hasn't had real damage done to it. First thing you need to do, get online, order yourself another intake boot. I've had this with all three of these sleds that I've bought. You buy the sled and the boot is shot. Somebody said, yeah, it used to run, the boot, you know, is bad. Or, or, or in the case of these two red sleds, bought them from a couple high school kids, and they're like, yeah, they run great. And I get there, and the, the intake boots are, they're duct taped up. I'm like, yeah, this is a, this is a bad thing. If the intake boot's cracked, put a fresh one on there, you've eliminated that problem, and you can adjust the carburetor at that point without worrying about the effects of the broken boot.
other thing that you want to make sure your snowmobile has is an air breather box. It hooks up to the back side of the carburetor and it basically takes in air from over here on the side. But this air box, or air silencer as it's sometimes called, it restricts the airflow just a bit. Without it, uh, your carburetor will tend to run just a little bit on the lean side. A lot of snowmobiles out there don't have that air silencer box because somebody took it off and never put it back on. Just make sure that if the snowmobile you're looking at doesn't have one, uh, make sure the price is adjusted for it. Now if we're looking at the handlebars of a snowmobile, handlebars come down to this steering arm. See it move there? Steering arm goes underneath the snowmobile and it comes kitty corner. You can see this link over here and it goes to this steering bar here in the front. These joints at the end of the steering linkage, they get pretty bound up and pretty rusty. You can see this one is really, really gross. These are supposed to be oiled, but because this thing has sat for a while, I would PB blaster the live and tar out of these things and then once it's freed up good then start oiling it. Also you can see this spindle right here. Now what this spindle is, this is the ski of the snowmobile and that spindle you can see there's the bottom of it. It runs up through the pan of the snowmobile. It runs up through this housing and here's the top of it. If you look right down here there's a greaser. When you grease this greaser this whole housing here gets filled with grease and coats the coats the spindle. If this hasn't been greased for a long time or never, it's gonna make steering incredibly difficult. Make sure every part that needs grease gets it, because chances are the last guy didn't. This is the primary clutch on the snowmobile. The secondary clutch drives a shaft in here, which drives a sprocket and a chain. The chain goes down through the chain case, it runs the drive shaft on the bottom. Inside of the chain case, is about two and a half inches of lube at the very bottom to keep this chain inside of here lubricated. What you want to do when you get an old sled before you buy, pull the cap, stick a wire all the way down to the bottom of the chain case. Make sure you have a couple inches of oil on it. If you don't, either that oil leaked out or the guy before you was running it without any oil at all. Most sleds have a muffler that's held on with three springs. Make sure your springs are there. Make sure you're not missing any springs. All right, let's talk numbers. This yellow sled in the middle is an 88 377E Skidoo. I paid $150 for that sled, and then I bought an $80 part sled because it needed several parts. By the time everything is said and done, I have $230 into this particular sled. Now the red snowmobile down on the end, I just picked up the other day for $200. It's got a good set of skis, the track's good, it fires right up and runs. 200 bucks, you know, that's not too bad. Now the same day I bought that red one, I bought this red one. These were owned by a couple high school kids who bought them from the original owners. Both of these sleds are almost sequential as far as the uh, serial numbers that are on them, the VIN numbers. They're only like 20 digits apart. This snowmobile cost me $130. It also fires right up and runs. So if you do the math and count gas and oil in and a little bit of transportation costs, I'm under $600 for three running sleds. Now granted, I've had to do quite a bit of work to all of these and I'll probably keep doing work. But that's part of the thing. You have to enjoy the process of working on this stuff and taking care of it, greasing all the components, making sure everything operates as good as it can. Another benefit from running real cheap vintage snowmobiles like this is you do have to go through them. You have to make sure everything is greased. You have to make sure everything is oiled. Check the electrical connectors. Check the fuel lines. If the carburetor needs work, pull the carburetor off. Take it apart. Clean it. Put it back together. The end result though is that you have a piece of machinery that you know from one end to the next. By the time you do that, you're going to have something that you understand. If you're out on a trail and something breaks, you probably have a good idea how to fix it. It's almost like buying an education on top of buying a piece of machinery. Now getting a redneck degree in shade tree mechanics is not everybody's cup of tea. I understand that. but. When you're talking about snowmobiles, what you want is you want to be your own mechanic because that machine is going to get you out into some place you don't want to walk out of. Same thing goes for boats. Snowmobiles and boats, they'll put you out in places where you, you're not going to get out without that machine. It's best to know your machine if it's going to take you somewhere where you could be stranded or lost or someplace you can't walk out of. 
Now snowmobiling is a lot of things. It's a load of fun to get out on the trails. It's a load of fun to get out in a hay field and just bomb around and blow off some steam. And the Spectrum goes from a tiny little single cylinder machine all the way up to a thousand cc mountain long track extreme machine. If you went out to buy a high powered brand new snowmobile today, it's gonna cost you upwards of $10,000. Most of us don't have that kind of money or we don't have that kind of dedication or that kind of interest in the sport of snowmobiling. We just want something we can pull the rope, fire it up, get out into the back country, get out on the lake, take the kids out, run around in the hay field. If that's what you wanna do, I hope this video has answered some of your questions about what sleds to look for, what to look for on an individual sled to evaluate it, some of the specific points that you definitely wanna check and some of the things like the intake boot that is going to be a, a joy kill for you and is going to ruin your sled if you don't catch it right off the bat. So take a couple hundred bucks, go out there, get on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, find yourself an old ditch banger, have some fun with it, use it for whatever you feel like doing, check all the points that we went over when you're evaluating the sled, gas her up, have a good time. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching Bush Radical. My name's Dave Whipple, and be radical, eh? See you soon. Thank <laughs> you.